In this week's lecture, we are going to talk about these subjects. We will start with central limit theorem. And as you see, after that, we are moving on to random processes, which is in fact the, the start of module number four in this course. And in this context, we will talk about the definition and the properties and the types of random processes. And then we'll talk about how to describe them in the sense that we can use joint distribution of time samples for this. And then we will talk about some statistics like mean, variance, autocorrelation, autocovariance functions. And when you have more than one uh, random process, random processes, we will have the functions of cross correlation, cross covariance, and we will define the concepts of orthogonal, uncorrelated, and independent random processes. Uh, but before we move on to random processes, of course, we will talk about uh, the central limit theorem. To arrive at the central limit theorem, if you remember, last week, in, in the last lecture, we talked about um, the convergence of the sample mean to the true mean. So for that, we defined uh, the sum of random variables in, in the specific case of uh, IID random variables. And then we looked at the mean of uh, this sum and uh, its average. Um, and we had seen that it converged to the true mean uh, as long as the variance was finite. Here we are going to look at the distribution rather than the mean. So we have the sum of these random variables, x1, x2, up to xn, let's say. And we will define this random variable, z sub n, defined in terms of the sum of the x random variables. Uh, well, when you look at this, you see that z sub n is in fact the standardized version of s sub n. What does standardized mean? Remember, a standard random variable doesn't have to be Gaussian. A standard random variable is one with a zero mean and a variance of one. So what we do here is we shift the sum random variable defined here by its mean, which is n times mu, and we then divide it by its standard deviation to obtain a random variable that is standard. So when you arrange the terms, you have uh, this expression for z sub n. We will look at the distribution of this random variable. To do that, since you, you see we have a, a large sum here, large in the sense that we have um, numerous terms involved in the sum. Instead of convolution, we will make use of uh, the characteristic function. If you remember, that was well, a nice property of characteristic functions. Convolution in, in, in the parameter domain or the variable domain, let's say, uh, corresponds to uh, multiplication in the transform domain. So here we have um, the characteristic function of random variable z. By definition, that's equal to the expected value of the function e to the power j omega times z sub n. Now, uh, when you put in the definition of z sub n, we have this one. This is just this formula here. We just have j omega here coming from this term. And well, the summation in the exponent can be expressed as a product of different, of separate exponential functions as such. This is like e to the power a plus b being equal to e to the power a times e to the power b. So that's the same here. I'm expressing this sum as this product here. And now, um, the independence comes into the picture here because we know that x sub i is all of them are independent from each other. And this expectation is it will be like e to the power, some function of x1, some function of x2, some function of x3, and so on. So since I know that x1, x2, x3, and so forth are all independent, I can write this as expected value of function of x1 times expected value of function of x2, etc. right? So this is what we do here. So the product here comes out of the, the, the expected value. 
which is enabled by independence. Never forget this, okay? Now we have a product and inside we have the expected value of an exponential function. Um, so this we, we, have, we were able to write by independence, but the next step you see, we have the product of the exact same function. Why? Because, well, this exponential is um, the same function for each of the xi's. And we know that xi's have the same di distribution because we know that they are iid, so they are independent and identically distributed. So the expectation of this function, whatever it is, has the same form for all xi, x1, x2, x3, etc. So I'm, I'm multiplying all these functions by themselves n times. So in fact, this is the expected value raised to power n because they are all the same, okay? And finally, at this point, I'm going to make use of the Taylor series expansion of the exponential function, which is I can write e to the power x as sum from zero to infinity, x to the power i divided by i factorial. This is the Taylor series expansion of the exponential function. And therefore, I can write this exponential function using this expansion, right? So this is uh, x to the power zero divided by zero factorial. X here, by the way, corresponds to this entire thing, obviously. So the first term is one. And then I have this, this term by itself. And then I have its square divided by two, which is two factorial, and I have then it's third power divided by three factorial plus the fourth power of this divided by four factorial and so on. So I, I lump them all into this term, R omega, okay? And uh, if you look closely, uh, all these terms, well, I'm applying expectation to them so I can separate them because we, ha we now have a summation. And this obviously is one. And this, when you look at this, this is constant, it's, it's not random. So this is just multiplied by the expectation of this. And then this again here is constant, okay? And then uh, I have the expectation of this function and I have in fact the expectation of this function, okay? But it is still a function of higher order omega terms. So uh, it, it, it's not that, uh, incorrect write it as rw so here as you see this is the first central moment which is zero for any random variable and this is the second central moment which is the variance okay and we know the variance to be sigma squared so that uh, cancels out with this term so i have j omega squared divided by 2n and j, j squared is obviously minus one and r omega, the function r omega, has terms in the form omega to the power n divided by n factorial, okay? And when you take n to infinity, the factorial function goes to infinity much more faster than the exponential function. Therefore, this limit as n goes to infinity goes to zero, okay? So therefore, when limit n goes to infinity, I'm going to ignore this term because it will approach to zero. This R omega term here. Okay, so uh, one final remark here is that we have this limit as n goes to infinity, the limit of the function one plus a over n raised to the power n is equal to e to the power a. This is a famous result in calculus. You can find it anywhere. Um, obviously, a to the uh, a over n goes to zero, so this whole thing goes to one. But n also goes to infinity, so you have the one to the power infinity uh, indeterminate form. But the result is e to the power a, which you can find in any calculus book. So what we have here is, as limit n goes to infinity, the characteristic function goes to what? one plus minus omega square over two n plus r omega, which goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And when you look at this, this is in this form, one plus something over n to the power n. So in this form, okay? Therefore the limit will be e to the power 
this. So the result is e to the power minus omega squared divided by two, which is the characteristic function of a standard Gaussian random variable. So what we conclude is the distribution of z sub n, remember the definition of z sub n, this thing here, the standardized sum of these IID random variables as n goes to infinity, the distribution of this random variable at the limit n goes to infinity approaches a standard Gaussian random variable and this famous result we call the, uh, the central limit theorem.